YouTube, Awesome Writer here. Welcome to my video where I'll be ranking every Power Rangers season slash series ever. I recently did a writer one and it was kind of perfect timing for that given that like Gotchar just started and we have this like perfect like beginning to end sort of thing for now. But for Power Rangers, as of this recording, we have an even more perfect reason to rank because I haven't updated this in a while. But also, technically speaking, as of this moment, Cosmic Fury is meant to be the end of the original continuity and series as we know it. As, as of this recording, there's supposed to be a reboot on the rise and it's going to be different. And so we're kind of at the very least a bookend for now. So it's a good time to re-rank the series. Just few disclaimers and notes at the beginning. As always, this is my opinion. I didn't run an algorithm or take a poll. I'm not telling you what to think. This is just my personal taste. And a lot of the time, my tastes will be weird. There'll be some series that I have higher than series that I think are better just because I enjoy watching them more. So this is just my personal list. I also am going to be ranking the super seasons mostly separate, sans a couple options in like the second seasons, mainly because I do think that there are some worth noting for the most part, the, um, the quality difference. Also, Hyperforce is on this list. Deal with it. Let's start, bottom of the barrel, Super Ninja Steel. I think this was the bottom last time as well. Hey oh, nope, nope. Anyway, I, this season just represents the worst of PR in my opinion. Like the worst it could possibly be. The worst thing about the Neo Saban era for me was how it devolved where we really made progress with the series. And like, it's always gonna be a kid show, but I think that it really aged up from, you know, in space through RPM, give or take, to this show that could be enjoyed by all ages. And they devolved it all the way to this thing that was like trying to be MMPR but worse, filled with fart jokes and focus on filler and weird acting that made it look like the actors were from a Brazzers photo. It's just, it's not great. There's a couple like ideas I like. I liked the, uh, the super suits even though, where's my super suit? It's in the cockpit. But even though they were only used in the cockpit, I still like the designs. Um, I love Dimensions in Danger. I like that they got the Sudasher brothers together for a crossover just because it was a cool thing to acknowledge historically, but it just represents everything that I dislike about PR's worst, especially in that era. Next up, this is where some of my hot takes come in, um, mostly for the casuals, but it's MMPR season one. Every now and then I just get a cycle of hate comments on my older ranking videos for having this so low, but the thing is, is MMPR season one is probably one so low on the list that I actually have affection for because, again, it was my first season. It brought forth a lot of the characters and concepts and everything that would, you know, be the foundation of my love for the series, but dear God, this season is awful. Like, it's fun to watch, kind of like VR Troopers or something, or, I don't know, a lot of other shows that from when you were really younger. It's fun to watch for like a couple episodes, maybe with a few beers and been like, oh, this was fun. And then once you get episode four or five, you're like, I have to stop. I can't, I can't do it anymore. That's what this is like. The whole experience can be boiled down to Day of the Dumpster, Green Ranger plot, and then that episode that was supposed to be the end before they got more episodes. Other than that, it's just a void of nothing. And whenever I do a rewatch, this is the toughest season to get through. I have a lot of fondness for the groundwork it laid down, but it's just a season of so much nothing. And it's so hard to put up with. Like some of the other seasons hold up better. You know, a lot of PR in some ways won't hold up as you get older, but this season season holds up the worst in terms of trying to get a rewatch going. Probably controversial putting this above and putting MMPR between these two seasons, but I wanted to give props to Ninja Steel next on the list because even though it had a lot of the problems, I think it had a really cool set of ideas, like the idea of the Galactic Warriors, you know, basically the Red Ranger being a servant on the ship would have been a really cool story to explain. Uh, the mythology was pretty interesting with that, you know, the idea of having a famous ranger. I liked stuff like the lion armor not being tied to the Ninja Steel Ranger's powers. Uh, you know, Calvin and Haley, I think, is one of the best on-screen relationships in terms of they actually feel like a couple. Like, it wasn't the best, but I think Ninja Steel was solid-ish at least, and I didn't all have as much leaning towards the filler, and I think it was proof of concept that Ninja Steel could have just been a 20 to 22 episode season. Like, that was another bad thing about Super Steel is it felt like they were already done with all their stories. So I wanted to give some props to Ninja Steel above MMPR season one because it actually has storylines going on. Next up is Megaforce. Now Megaforce and Super Megaforce are some of the most hated on series and absolutely deserves the criticism, but it does not deserve to still be being talked about with so much hatred. It's like, get over it. Get over that and get over the Q-Ranger stuff. Just stop, fandom. Just stop. But Megaforce is a series that's not my favorite, but for me it's like a series that's talked about like your eyes are going to start bleeding when you watch it. But honestly, Megaforce proper is just kind of the most middle of the road, milk toast Neo Saban season. I think it had some improvements from early Samurai, like, you know, Growing Pains. I really liked Mega Mission. I liked the idea of the Ghost Ager suits being used somewhat in the anniversary because I feel they echo MMPR. I liked some of the idea of the hybridization. But it's just, it's not great, but it's kind of the most middle-of-the-road Neo Saban season. And I think it's low on the list, but I don't really have as much hatred for it as most people. Next up is Super 
Megaforce. I did swap these. Megaforce used to be ahead of it because I kind of let the fandom think, get into my head that you have to rank this lower. And don't get me wrong, Super Megaforce is extremely flawed. Much missed potential with the anniversary. I think even more missed potential with the cool hybridization because the finale heading into this from Megaforce to Super Megaforce felt very Zeo-esque. And the way they blended the mythologies and made Bray Jira a part of the Armada was cool. There were so many cool ideas. They dropped the ball. I was never as mad as most people because I was and still am sick to death of anniversary stuff. So I would sooner see the show be better than do more cameos. So I was fine with the level of cameos, to be honest. But yeah, missed opportunities to be sure. But it's also like get over it, fans. The thing is, though, is this season's just more fun to watch. That's why I changed the rankings. I was thinking, I know people can't have fun watching this because they're like, okay, sure. But when you rewatch it, it's just more of an easy watch because it's a little bit more breezy. There's more fun stuff to watch with the legend changes and, you know, stuff like Casey's episode. And a Legendary Battle, if you can take off your go Kaiju hat for five seconds, I'm not saying it's great, but it's a fun watch. Like, I get a feeling there's generations of kids that just grew up watching it, you know, in the finale, I'm like, that's a kick-ass finale, and didn't even care about Go Kaiju. Next up is Dino Supercharge. I had kind of a complicated relationship with Dino Charge, as the series overall, I really liked at the beginning, and then near the end, I started to have more criticisms, and I feel that the fandom really latched onto the season at the time, because it was overall an improvement from what we were getting, not to mention stuff having Yoshi on the cast, and so people defended it really crazily, almost like in a cult manner, so it made it hard to criticize it, because I was constantly clashing with fans, as I always am. Uh, so it wasn't until I was able to rewatch the series I was able to get a more positive outlook. Now it is lower on the list because unfortunately they took a lot of the potential of Dino Charge and wasted it. A lot of arcs not paying off. Filler was put in the forefront. You know, some weird decisions. But even though it's lower on the list, I don't hate the series as, as, as much as I did. Mainly it's kind of like one of those things like movies such as Spider-Man 3 or Amazing Spider-Man 2 that I have appreciated more and more over the years when I learned about the behind the scenes problems. So now I'm able to appreciate what the creatives were actually able to give us in terms of positives, knowing that all the negatives weren't necessarily their fault. And we found out that Saban had like all these mandates of like, you can't be too serialized. The jokes have to be in the forefront. The filler has to be in the forefront. So I'm able to appreciate that there was a lot of cool ideas in this series, like the Dark Energem, uh, the Doomwing stuff. Once I knew that it was in a different universe, I kind of liked the Time You Want Me finale. And I think the fact that there was a long running story about finding the Energems helped this because in comparison to Super Steel, where you had all filler, there was like no real ongoing story other than we're fighting bad guys. But the fact that you had the ongoing Ener Energem fight and quest made it feel like stuff was always happening, which is really nice. It's still unfortunate how much missed potential there was, but I have softened on it. Next up is Samurai Proper. This series had a lot of growing pains, a lot of problems going against it. Like, remember it started with episode three or whatever, and it's this really weird mix of like basically doing a version of what Saban always did, which not always did, but did like with Time Force and Lightspeed and Wild Force, which is take like, I would say 85% of the Sentai and changing a couple things. It's honestly not that dissimilar from Time Force and stuff like that. People don't want to admit that. Um, but they're trying to do that while following it closer than they ever had to the point where I think they just translated some Shinkendra scripts. Like at one point, I uh, one of the characters yelled out, unforgivable. I'm like, I don't think we do that in the US. So yeah, it was awkwardly trying to be that, but also be MMPR, and I had these really weird growing pains. Over time, the two Samurai seasons are ones that I've rewatched more out of this era for various videos and stuff, and I've grown a soft spot for it. I think that because they did follow the Shinkenger stuff, they had more story going on than a lot of the Neo Saban era stuff, which makes it more enjoyable. As things go on, it gets a little bit better. It does steadily improve. You have characters like Antonio that I really liked. It's definitely a very awkward growing pain, but once you're able to sort of see past some of your complaints a little bit, it does have some good in there. Next up is, this is one of the few ones I'm ranking together, um, which is Beast Morphers overall. I'm not sure where to rank seasons one and two, because it's kind of like, I just can't decide which one is above each one. Like, Beast Morphers had a lot of potential. I love so much of its ideas. Some of them were executed well, others not so much, but I love so much of his ideas. I like most of the cast, except, actually I like all the cast except for Nate. And uh, it's just a mixed feeling, because it started off strong. I think it was overall solid, but still filled with a lot of those Neo Saban problems. You know, a lot of problems with like the comedic relief characters interrupting really nice moments. You know, I think an over-reliance on season connections in the end. And I don't know, I just had mixed feelings on it. Like the RPM connection was cool, but at the same time feels like so weird to have one of the best, most mature PR series get its wrap up in a Neo saban -y season. Like, I don't know. Beast Morphers, I've just really softened on. I want to rewatch it and see if I like it better or worse, but for now, it just kind of sits here. Next up is Turbo, which is a season that gets a lot of hate. I think it's more mixed than anything. Honestly, I think the last 
quarter plus is really good. Once you really start getting into like the end game-ish plots with the second cast, you know, where they're kind of have their backs to the wall when Diva Talk steals their Megazord and you head into the finale, which I think is actually one of the best finales. I think that part of the show is pretty good. I think there's some decent parts in the first half. I think despite it being kind of rushed, the, the passing of the torch was pretty good. I, I really like the Millennium Message. So I think that there's some good, it's a very mixed season, but it's got a lot more good than some of the Neo Saban seasons. Um, mainly it just feels weird in the first half. I think once they change over the cast, it gets a little bit better, but even when they change the cast over, there's this awkward period where they're just doing filler, but it's weird when you rewatch this season, both with cast 1.0 and 2.0, it almost feels like a show that's trying to be PR, that's trying to capitalize on PR success and be PR, because you have all the hallmarks of PR, but you have like this weird alpha and this weird non-Zordon. It feels like royalty-free PR, it's just weird. It's a weird season, gets a lot of hate, but I think there's a lot of good in there that can make it rank a little bit higher. Next up is Dino Charge proper. As mentioned, once I was able to rewatch Dino Charge, I was able to have a lot higher of opinion of it. It's still mixed, and I think it has a lot of those Neo Saban things, but this series just has a lot of charm. I think they did a really good job of making improvements over the Zatcher Neo Saban era with a great cast of characters, really interesting mythology, uh, you know, a good energy and spirit, and it is a more fun one to revisit despite having some issues. And it's, it's ranked higher on my list. It is it does seemingly it does seem a little bit lower, but that's just because I like other seasons more. But I I have developed a soft spot for this series. Speaking of a soft spot for series, next up is Super Samurai. I kind of like Super Samurai. Again, rewatching Samurai more, I found more good than bad. Like, it's not the saying that there's not a lot of bad, but I'm just saying I'm able to sort of push it aside and enjoy it. And I think the series really did steadily improve, helped by the fact that it was using Shinkenger's more serialized stories. But I'm going to be honest, I like all the changes they made. Um, I don't think necessarily his delivery as a villain is better, but I like the backstory of Decker better than Juzo. I don't care. And also, um, Lauren is so much better than Karu, it's ridiculous. It's just so much more of a, it makes more sense. I just, I don't know. I think this season was solid for the Neo Saban era. Um, I think the cast started to warm up a little bit. Again, I love characters like Antonio. Um, I think it had one of the best, if not the best finale out of the stretch of era. Like it had like, I think a two-parter, or at least it felt like a two-parter that felt more akin to old school Neo Saban era one. So I don't know, I got a soft spot for this one. Next up is Overdrive. I always describe Overdrive as one of the seasons that's my least favorite that I'm defending the most because it has this reputation group think of it, just terrible, terrible, whole thing, every frame, every character. Like, no, it's not. Like, both because it's been a fandom group think since 2007, but also because of Linkara. And I can't tell you how many people have absorbed his opinion as their own. I, I mean, legitimately, I've seen so many people over the years be like, oh, Overdrive's terrible. Of course, I've never watched it. No, just no. It's not great. There's always something about this series that doesn't click with me. And I think it's the cast more so, but it has, and I, I just said it's not great. I think it's a good series though, actually. I think it's got a really creative use of Bokenger's framework to create this Corona Aurora storyline. I love the multi-villains, the, the globe trotting. It's got a lot of really cool, unique ideas. A series that I appreciated even more after the Neo Saban era, how much creativity was poured into this. It's got some great supporting characters like Spencer, one of my favorite supporting characters of all time. My favorite team up movie. I think that the Mac plot is surprisingly deep. Like he basically becomes suicide He's like, I don't care what happens to me, I'm just a robot. That's like kind of dark for PR and much better than it's great to be human. Again, it's not my favorite series, but I think it's got a lot more good than it's given credit for. I'm just saying, give it a chance. Don't listen to the group think. Never listen to other fans, they're idiots. Including me! Next up is MMPR Season 2. Now, MMPR Season 2 does include a lot of the problems for MMPR Season 1, and it's not always the easiest to rewatch, but it is easier to rewatch for a couple reasons. I also want to say that I do have a bit of a soft spot for this series, because despite the fact that I did start with MMPR Season 1 growing up, this is the season I remember watching the most when I was younger in terms of like the VHSs and the re ones, the Wii ones, the Wii ones, guys, that was little me talking about Wii ones. But for me, when I think of MMPR, I think of the Rock. Rocky, Adam, Aisha cast, and the White Ranger. So I have a soft spot for this version. But also, it is more entertaining to rewatch because I think the filler got better. I think that there was a little bit, the preaching got a little more balanced with plot, and there's a lot more going on, whether it's the power transfer or the White Ranger, a lot more two-parters. And it's entertaining to watch just to see them do stuff like try to splice together the Jutu footage with Die Ranger, which I don't know why they didn't just keep the original Megazord around so they could have some episodes where they used Jutu Ranger 2 footage and some episodes where they used Die Ranger footage, but that's fun to watch, and it's fun to watch them swap out the cast as you are simultaneously disappointed in yourself for not noticing it as a kid, and also low-key impressed at how slimy they pulled it off. 
Next up, Dino Fury Season 1. I really like a lot about Dino Fury. It has a great cast, great mythology, great villain. Um, I really just like the series overall, to be honest with you. I really do. I think that this was really a strong improvement. I loved um, tying together some loose ends from previous series. Some people like hate that, but I thought it was nice that they went out of their way to fix some things that were kind of bothering fans. And I loved the, uh, the inclusion of the Morphin Masters. It's a little bit held back by the fact that it has some of those Neo Saban holdovers that were always there for all three seasons of this series, but were most prevalent here. Next up, speaking of, is Cosmic Fury. This one I might go up or down on the list because I've only just watched it this year. I haven't had as much time to sit with the series, but I really enjoyed it. Very imperfect, very rushed. Again, it's one of those seasons that I don't hold a lot of that against them because I know that they wanted 20 episodes and they got cut back to 10. But with what they did, I thought it was really cool, really fun, a lot of great energy, a lot of cool ideas. I loved having an almost fully original season, um, you know, free of Sentai footage. For me, it proved you don't need the Sentai footage. Um, but I just really liked this series. It wasn't perfect, but it had a lot of cool ideas and was a fun watch and was a decently satisfying conclusion to PR for now for me. After that is Lightspeed Rescue. This is a series that I feel like I feel different about it every time, where even when I was younger, it wasn't one of my favorites. Like every time I watch it either, it's like, yeah, it's okay. I don't really like it that much. Sometimes I'm like, actually, that's a damn solid season. And then there was a couple times where I'm like, I actually really like that. I will say at the end of the day, Lightspeed isn't necessarily my cup of tea. I think Carter Grayson, he's like basically Riley from Buffy. It's like, how could you call that character a badass? He's literally the most milk toast character. Like, I don't know, whatever. But, um, and I also can't stand Kelsey, but it also has the Sky Cowboy Joel, who's one of my favorite characters in PR. But I will say this season, it's just not my cup of tea entirely. I, like I said, I kind of have a different opinion every time I revisit it, but it's never overly negative. I will just say, I think it's a damn solid season of PR. It's just never been for me. Except Dino Fury season two. I think this is kind of a good middle of the road of the overall Dino Fury series. Dino, yeah, did I say Dino Charge? I don't know, at some point I might have said Dino Charge, but Dino Fury Season 2 is what I'm talking about right now, is you did have some Neo Saban holdovers, but I think it was lessened up enough that there was a more of a serialized factor. You know, having more episodes than the 10 allowed it to breathe a little bit more. Um, I really like the stuff they did with, like, the Void Knight character and the Void Queen character. I think it was just overall my favorite part of the Dino Fury era, even though I love the original of Cosmic Fury. I think this series just felt overall more solid because it was able to, like, have the amount of episodes it wanted to. Not that I think he necessarily always needs so many episodes, but I think going in, you know, knowing you wanting more and then getting the amount, the smaller amount didn't help Cosmic Fury. But I really like Dino Fury season two, and I, I think it's kind of like represents what I like most about the overall series. Next up is Zeo. Zeo is a complicated one. I feel like Zeo, like if MMPR is the nostalgia favorite for casual fans. I feel like Zeo almost feels like the nostalgia favorite of the hardcore fans because it represents an era in which we all continued to stay on. Now, Zeo was a mixed series. I think in a lot of ways it was a step down from MMPR season three. I think it went back to more filler. It had a clunky ending. But I just always have a soft spot for this series. I think it has a lot to do with the hype building up to it. The hype build up to it was so well done. And I think they did such a great job of transitioning to it. And it still was a vast improvement over the first few series of MMPR. And there was a lot of good in there, like the story where Tommy became king for a day and the Gold Ranger stuff and the mystery story of that. So it's a mixed series, but it's still one that holds a soft spot for me. Next up is Lost Galaxy. Lost Galaxy is one that's really high on people's list and it is a great series, but it never clicked with me as much as some other people. I do think it's a really cool series though. For whatever reason, its pilot is one of my favorites of all time. It's got a really epic scale. I like stuff they did with the mythology and the space, you know, setting and the, the setting of Terra Venture was really cool. I love uh, the inclusion of Corone in there. I'm glad, I mean, even though it would have been cool to have Cassie, Corone was so much of a better pick and I think that was a fascinating storyline. Um, you know, it just, it didn't all come together to be one of my favorites, but this series does have a lot of really cool stuff. After that, probably controversial to rank it after this, like higher, but MMPR season three. For me, this is the best of MMPR season three. Like it started off great, even though technically the premieres the Weird Master Rider crossover. Ninja Quest is my favorite, one of my favorite premieres as well. I think it had a really epic feel of the Zords being destroyed, getting the new Zords. I think this season had uh, the most like feeling of the Rangers' backs were to the wall on and off almost the whole season until the point where I, you kind of forget Zed and Rita did kind of defeat the Rangers. I mean, they had help from Master Vile, but they did defeat them. And I honestly really like the Aquatar Rangers arc. I like the Aquatar Rangers period. I personally include Alien Rangers as part of season three. I know that that seems weird because I'm separating the other seasons, but that's how I'm counting this. But not only did I like the Alien Rangers as something unique, but also the, the buildup um, to the Zeo arc was really well done in this season. It's without question the easiest to rewatch with the most awesome stuff going on.
Now, coming up next is Time Force, a very beloved season that makes many people's tops. This used to be top five for me. I still adore it. I still think it's a great series with some amazing villains, great characters, great drama. But every time, not every time, but the last couple times I've rewatched it, I just didn't like it as much. I found it to be more boring with a lot more filler that I wasn't into as I remembered. Don't get me wrong, I still like it and I don't have anything overly negative to say other than, again, based on my recent rewatches, I just wasn't vibing with it as much. Which is why, next on the list, is Hyperforce. Now, this, I know this is an RPG show, it's a bit different. I don't care. I love Hyperforce. You know, it's not that different than reading an audiobook. I loved the storyline in this, the characters. It was the most care put into PR in a long time in regards to taking advantage of the story and world, but especially during the Neo Saban era. I love every single one of the characters, like legit characters like Vesper and Chloe are some of my all time favorites. It was so much fun and that you could legit get invested in the storyline, but also would have fun, absolutely hilarious moments like the Halloween episode or Vesper calling Alpha, say, Alpha, are you a Spanish? You know, always thinking that, that uh, Alpha was a secret spy. It was just a blast from start to finish. I know it can be kind of a slog for people to get through. It's not for everyone, but it's for me. And again, speaking of rewatches, T Time Force is one that just kind of moved down on my rankings because of rewatches, while Wild Force up next is one that's moved up. Not a perfect series. It's very tonally weird where it does have some of those darker, more mature stories like Time Force, but also really silly stuff and, you know, Cole's acting is uneven. But this series was so much better than I remembered it being. Like, it's actually one of the more serialized ones where something that's, like, Benefiting the story happens almost every episode. It has a great score, uh, great storylines, especially with Master Orc, one of the most underrated villains of all time. Like, a legit, you very rarely have an irredeemable human villain. Just, I've rewatched it two times in most recent years, and both times I was, like, impressed with how much I really liked it. Again, it's very imperfect, but I was really into this story and mythology, even if the cast and characters aren't perfect. Next up is Jungle Fury. Now, this is probably another controversial one to rank this high, and I do objectively think certain seasons, even Wild Force, uh, Time Force, Lightspeed, are tighter seasons in terms of the storytelling and stuff like that, but this season and Ninja Storm, I think, are two of my most rewatched seasons just in terms of the fun. I just love their energy, the cast. There is some great story beats in there. And again, yeah, it's about the enjoyment for me. Sometimes I had to weigh like, like, yeah, this season's better, but I just like this one more. And I just love Jungle Fury. Like I said, love the cast. My favorite ranger of all time in there is RJ. You know, I think Casey is super underrated. I'm not the biggest fan of Theo. He's kind of douchey the more you watch it. But Lily's great. Fake NPH is great. Fran is great. And you know, this was the first season I watched after getting into Sentai. And so I like that I was able to still love PR and find something different to like love about this that had nothing to do with Geki Ranger. And some of the plot I think is mixed like in the second half-ish and like the way they handled the Spirit Rangers wasn't the best, but the fact that we got them was awesome in the show. I still prefer their base forms, but the fact that we got them in there and there was some really cool stuff at the end too with like Jared and Casey and Casey's development and but at the end of the day, for me, it's just about fun. And I just love this season. It's one of the ones, like I said, I've rewatched the most. And like quasi recently, I discovered that that streaming channel that streams PR. And every now and then when I'm in a PR mood or if there's like nothing else to watch, I pop that on. And like Jungle Fury and Ninja Storm were airing a lot at various times. And I just never got sick of watching it. After that is Mystic Force, which I've always had a soft spot for the season. I think it's super underrated. It's another one that I didn't like as much at first. But then once I got into it, I really really liked it, and I think it's because of that fact, kind of like with series like Kamen Rider Blade and, and Bokenger were series that it took me a while to get into, but once I did, I felt I was rewarded. And once I got used to the cast and, you know, the story, when I went back and rewatched the episodes I had a harder time with, I really enjoyed it. And I think it's a really underrated cast. Not necessarily the best, but I think it's a strong and unique cast of characters. I know some people get annoyed at the Mystic Force stuff, which I think is overblown. It kind of reminds me of Daigo, where, like, you have a situation where in most cases, you will have a Red Ranger main character or a main character that gets the focus, but then all of a sudden you decide to make it a problem. I'm not saying it not necessarily isn't even a problem. I'm just saying people like let that color their opinion of the whole season. Whereas I think it does have a great cast, especially Xander, another all-time favorite, one of the best supporting casts. And even though maybe it could have been even better with 38 to let things breathe a little bit, I love the tighter pacing of the 32 episodes. And I love that it took kind of the framework of Magi Ranger and made it its own with more of a mystical, like, like Mystic Knights type of feel to it. And I just really like the season. I think it's underrated. It used to be my number five, but cracking the top five, and these sometimes will shift. Outside of the top, maybe one, two, um, these will vary. Actually, the, the top two did shift, but some outside of the top one, uh, these will shift around depending on my mood or my most recent rewatch. And cracking the top five this time was Ninja Storm, because again, 
I realize how much I love this season. It's one of my most rewatched, the most fun, like when I'm looking for good comfort PR. And it's very well, well balanced. It's terribly well balanced. Like it's well balanced between just being a more fun, light, actiony season with humor, but also like when it wants me to take the storyline seriously. Like I know you know what I mean. Like the drama with the family, or like the dynamic between Cam and his dad when he wants to go out there and fight. I'm able to. It's never like too silly or stupid or childish where like it feels weird when they're trying to make me actually care about the show. And it's very well balanced. And I think the storytelling of it is pretty tight, actually. Like it, unlike Jungle Fury, which is my other favorite fun season where I feel the plot's messy, I never felt anything messy in the season. It's a very well put together, very fun season. In fact, the only complaint I can think against it is I didn't like that it was prophesized at the end that they were like chosen ones because I loved the idea of the three misfits being the one to rescue everyone. But other than that, no notes. Four is SPD. A great season with a great cast, a great style and vibe that felt like this weird sci-fi comic vibe. Again, I, they took the framework of Decker Ranger, which is more episodic, and created a serialized story with unique elements like the A Squad. There's a reason it's so beloved. And like, I need I say more. I'm not going to, because I'm trying to make the video shorter. Now, this is one that has shifted. It used to be my number two, but it's now number three, which is RPM, which I still love. RPM, again, one of my favorite casts. I love that we fleshed out pretty much every member of the cast. So many all-time favorites. I think almost all of them crack my top five or top tens of the Rangers of the respective color. Um, excellent character with Dr. K, some really deeper, darker storytelling. And yet it was very well balanced with some of the best humor in the series. You know, the whole, they're not, they're not spandex. You know, it's not spandex scene. Uh, the I'm Scottish scene, so memorable. The only reason it's dropped one slot is two reasons, actually. Number one, it's because the one that's in the number two slot now, I've just realized how much I love it. But also, it's that second half, and the, I just, not that it was necessarily bad, but I really just wish we got to see Gazellian's vision um, seen through. And like, just some of the comments Chiplin made about like Gazellian's original vision just rubbed me the wrong way. But I still love RPM, don't get me wrong. But number two is Dino Thunder. Again, this used to be number three, I believe. And I just recently, I rewatched not the whole thing, but a little bit of it from that you know, Power Rangers channel, and man, I love this season. It's just so good. Another one that uh, is just fun to rewatch. It's just, I've rewatched it so many times. In fact, back in the day when they released those, I mean, I rewatched it on Jetix a lot, but back in the day when they released like three quarters of a season on DVD, I watched the hell out of those DVDs. And uh, yeah, I just, it's such a great cast of characters, unique villain, um, great spotlight on Tommy, but he never overshadowed it to the point where I think this would still be in the top five, even if like Tommy was just Dr. Q and he wasn't, oh, Q's here? No. And you know, he was just a generic character. You know, I think the season stood on its own and the Tommy stuff was just the icing on top. You know, it was MMPR modern done right, where it had these echoes and homages to it, but it was very much its own thing and not trying to relive the past. And I think if I had to have like a top three seasons that I just enjoy rewatching, like if I had to only pick three seasons to rewatch ever, and that's all I could rewatch, it would be Dino Thunder, Ninja Storm, Jungle Fury. But my number one is Power Rangers in Space. It's just kind of the pinnacle of what I like about PR, which was this crazy building story that took all these different moving pieces from all these stories and seasons and had them all come together in this kind of, you know, the climax and finale of the Zordon era. Not to mention it was great to finally see some more depth to villains, this cool mystery story with Corone, um, and then just the, the space-faring adventure feel of it made it feel very different. And it still stands as like my favorite because it represents what I like about PR that makes PR unique from like Sentai and Rider, which is this feeling of that shared world all coming together and being this unique thing when you're watching, especially Countdown to Destruction. Like it's, there's elements from everything from uh, Jew Ranger to Mega Ranger to even stuff like at various points, Black RX sprinkled in there. I don't think that Mass Rider made a cameo, but you know what I mean? It's like, there's so many different things put into that. And I, I just love that. And I think the story was an overall solid conclusion to that original era. But that is just my list. As I said, it's not the correct list, just my personal list. Feel free to share yours in the comments and try to be respectful of everyone's opinions. But until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps and ring that bell to get notifications for my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.